This video will be a simple overview of the spacetime split from the spacetime algebra to its even subalgebra, which is isomorphic to the algebra of physical space. This video will require a basic understanding of geometric algebra and its application to physics. I will be referencing the algebra of physical space quite a lot, so I really recommend you check out my video on that. Traditional notation for the spacetime algebra will be used in this video, where the bases are relabeled to gamma due to their equivalence with Dirac's gamma matrices. Whenever I talk about the algebra of physical space, I will be using the Pauli representation that I used in my last video. For the sake of simplicity, in this video I will not refer to the algebra of physical space as the Pauli algebra of space. I will just call it the algebra of physical space. I will present this video in five small parts, four position in the spacetime algebra, spacetime splits, mapping from the spacetime algebra to the bivectors in the algebra of physical space, mapping to the algebra of physical space's pseudoscalar, and a quick note on Dirac spinners. The spacetime algebra is generated by this commutation relation, where eta is the plus minus 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 Minkowski metric. This can be an abstract way to look at it, so I prefer to rearrange the expression. The commutation relation that generates the algebra simply states that the dot product between the unit vectors of the space must generate the Minkowski metric. In its most intuitive sense, this means that the basis vector associated with time squares a positive one, while the basis vectors associated with space squared a negative one. A general element of the spacetime algebra therefore has this fairly meganormous form. Yes, I made that word up, and it is awesome. The component of the pure scalar part is blue, while for the vectors it's orange, for the bivectors it's purple, for the trivectors it's pink, and for the quad vector it's yellow. To describe the spacetime position of an object or event, only vectors are needed. For ease of distinction, and as foreshadowing, I've colored the time-like component blue, and the space-like components orange. For those wondering, there is also a reciprocal frame that negates the spacelike component's sign, but showing that here is not relevant to the video's goal. Given the spacetime position x, this four-dimensional vector can be projected into a 3 plus 1 dimensional object composed of a scalar and timelike bivector part. This is done through leftwise multiplication by the timelike basis vector. This is called a spacetime split, specifically because it splits the spacetime vector into a scalar time component and a timelike bivector component, which represents the position in physical 3 space as seen by the observer defined by the timelike basis vector. In general, any timelike vector defined as some observer's timelike rest frame vector will perform a spacetime split to that observer's rest frame. Therefore, Lorentz transformations aren't the only rest frame finding tool within the spacetime algebra. Those of you familiar with the algebra of physical space should think the split form similar to the power vector formulation of relativity. To make it clearer, suppose the following mapping from the spacetime algebra to the algebra of physical space. This mapping may seem weird, especially since intuition says unit bivector square to negative one, while unit vector square to positive one. But since these bivectors are time-like, they actually square to positive one as well. And conceptually, these bivectors are actually super cool. The time-like vector component of these bivectors just tells you to sweep the space-like vector along the time axis. So a time-like bivector is just a space-like vector swept through time. But continuing to apply the shown mapping, it turns out that the space-time split really does map to the algebra of physical space. While it's been shown that the spacetime split does map to the power vector representation of the algebra of physical space, it doesn't prove what I claimed at the beginning of this video, namely that this even subalgebra of the spacetime algebra is isomorphic to the algebra of physical space. To show this, it's necessary to find what the space-like bivectors and the spacetime algebra quad vector map to within the algebra of physical space. I'll first motivate the mapping for the space-like bivectors. Recall that space-like bivectors are bivectors with no time-like basis component. Recall that time-like bivectors behave as three-dimensional vectors within the sub-even algebra. Then the space-like bivectors act like the generators of rotations for these three-dimensional vectors. Well, in the algebra of physical space, only the traditional bivectors are capable of that. Therefore, a simple mapping of the space-time algebra's space-like bivectors to the algebra of physical space's bivectors is created. Honestly, from the results of the bivector mappings, it's trivial to define the mapping between the spacetime algebra's quad vector and the algebra of physical space's trivector. 
I thought it'd be funny to just have a short independent section in the video. Anyway, here's the full mapping. And blah blah blah, the even subalgebra of the spacetime algebra is isomorphic to the algebra of physical space. An interesting thing in geometric algebra is that, in general, a spinner is an element of a given algebra that only has even parts. That is, a spinner is generally an element of the given even subalgebra. This leads us to a problem when considering Dirac spinners in the algebra of physical space. In my last video, I introduced this representation of a Dirac spinner, which obviously doesn't only have even parts. I mean, duh, there are vector and trivector parts. Well, good shit. As this video showed, the algebra of physical space is isomorphic to the spacetime algebra's even subalgebra. Using the established mapping, it's easy to see that the Dirac spinner is indeed an element of an even subalgebra, therefore can be interpreted as a general spinner. It's really a nice reminder that four-dimensional spacetime is more fundamental than our observed three dimensions plus time. Please, if you enjoyed this video even a bit, like, subscribe, and comment to show the YouTube algorithm that I am not, in fact, irrelevant and am somewhat cool.